In Hendersonville, North Carolina, a funeral took an unexpected turn when the children of a deceased woman noticed their mother's eyes open during the ceremony. Susan's late husband, Rick, had been a prosperous businessman who left his entire estate to her after a tragic car accident claimed his life. This ensured Susan and her children never faced financial hardships. As Susan grew older, her children, all comfortably settled by then, failed to fulfill their duties in caring for their aging mother. Despite Martha, Susan's devoted helper, reaching out to them when Susan suffered a heart attack, none of her children bothered to visit her in the hospital. Martha's calls went unanswered by three of them, and when Jason, Susan's eldest son, did answer, he rudely dismissed her concerns. Why bother me when mom's in the hospital being cared for by doctors? She's not dead. Jason snapped at Martha before abruptly ending the call. Upon awakening, Susan found Martha, tearful, at her bedside. Are you all right, ma'am? Martha asked, her voice shaking. I tried reaching out to them, but it's fine, Martha, the elderly lady said weakly, acknowledging her son's absence. They are my sons. I raised them alone after Rick died. I had a feeling they wouldn't show up. After recovering, Susan promptly contacted her lawyer to draft a will, keeping its contents a secret until her passing. Unbeknownst to her children, the day would soon come when the will would be unveiled and Susan would depart for her heavenly abode. A few days later, Martha called Jason again. I'm sorry to bother you, Jason, Martha explained, but Mrs. Henderson has passed away. Her dying wish was for all of her sons to attend her funeral, so I called you. Initially reluctant to travel from New York to North Carolina for the funeral, Jason realized that with his mother's passing, the will would be read, revealing what she had left for him. Recognizing the potential financial gain, Jason didn't argue with Martha and flew out the next day to bid farewell to Susan. His brothers, Harry, Tom, and Paul, also responded promptly to their mother's funeral invitation. They gathered at her house the following day, all present to honor Susan's memory before the funeral commenced. Susan lay peacefully in her coffin, adorned in a beautiful black dress and sparkling diamond jewelry. Jason, positioned closest to her, pretended to grieve, shedding insincere tears. Paul broke the silence, questioning Martha, where is everyone else? Are we the only ones invited to the funeral? Martha explained, it was Mrs. Henderson's wish for a private funeral with just the four of you. The priest will arrive soon, but for now, please pray together for your mother's soul. Tom interjected with a laugh, her soul must be at peace, loaded with diamonds even in death. If I had those, I'd be content. I agree, Harry chimed in. Can't we just get this over with quickly? Martha, undeterred, reminded them, your mother loved you dearly. Please pray for her and bid her farewell. Paul, focused on practical matters, retorted, we're here to meet with the lawyer. Let's finish this quickly. Martha acquiesced, please visit your mother one by one and bid her farewell. Fine, let's start with the eldest, Paul instructed, directing Jason to go first. As Jason drew near the coffin, he couldn't believe his eyes. His mother's eyes were moving. Dismissing it as fatigue from the flight, he moved closer, only to see Susan's eyes open wide. Shocked, he called out to his brothers, urging them to see for themselves. Paul, Harry, and Tom rushed over, incredulous at what they saw. Susan's eyes were indeed open. Martha, who had been lying in the coffin as a part of the ruse, sat up and addressed them. Surprise, boys, you can still go to the lawyer, but you'll be disappointed. Your mother is alive. Outraged, Jason accused, did you plan this with Martha? This is ridiculous, mom. Do you think this is a joke? Susan, now sitting up, retorted, Do you think I'm a fool? Terrified by their mother's unexpected move, the sons were speechless. Susan continued, her voice firm, After Rick died, I raised you all alone. All I wanted was for my sons to bid me a proper farewell. Instead, 
I hear you arguing about my death and your inheritance. Do you have no regard for me? If you're only after the money, tell me, and I'll give it to you." Susan's voice wavered, on the verge of tears. All her sons, gathered under false pretenses to exploit her, felt a deep sense of shame. They stood in silence, heads bowed, realizing the extent of their wrongdoing. Jason, who was only 15 when their father passed, remembered the hardships their mother endured raising him and his siblings while grieving. Seeing her sadness now, he was the first to apologize, and his brothers quickly followed suit. I'm sorry, Mom, Jason embraced her, tears in his eyes. I shouldn't have treated you that way. I'm truly sorry. We don't want your money, Mom, Harry added sincerely. We're sorry for hurting you. We won't do it again. Tom and Paul also expressed their regret and hugged their mother. We're sorry, Mom. We won't neglect you again. We were too caught up in our lives, but we'll make it right," Paul promised. Over time, the sons showed their mother they had changed. They visited regularly and gathered at her house once a month. Susan, who passed away five years later from cardiac arrest, cherished the time she had with her sons in her final days. She later amended her will, reflecting her son's renewed commitment to her. After Susan's passing, her will revealed that she had divided her estate equally among her sons, with half also going to her devoted caretaker, Martha. In a heartfelt note, Susan expressed her love for her sons and her happiness in her final days, reassuring them not to feel upset about her decision regarding Martha. Every year on her death anniversary, Susan's sons visit her grave with a bouquet of her favorite flowers. They also visit Martha at Susan's former home, where she now lives spending time with her as a way to honor their mother's memory and her wishes.